think yeah. one thing that people can take away is that you are really passionate about fomenting passion about poetry. Yeah, and that's that's absolutely one of my missions. Yeah, I mean, I mean that yes. that is, that is a, I mean that's a big part. Of, I want I want to I want to help people see that they can love poetry. I mean, like because I mean, you know, Americans. I mean, we love all kinds of art forms. We love we love uh, paintings. I got some on the wall back there. We love we love movies. We love we love fashion. We love architecture. We love design. Beautiful, you know, the way maybe cars. You know, gra commercial graphic design. We like all that beautiful stuff, but we don't like poetry. You know, and it's like doesn't have to be that way you know is it, but, is but it, as long as everybody's it, writing the academic tradition you know where the where the point of the poem is to get is to get published in an academic journal so you can end up teaching it to undergraduates i mean that's that, that that's going to perpetuate itself in kind of a, a, a sealed off system that's not really engaged in the culture the wider culture around it you know i mean like so you look at our culture right now i mean most of our movies i mean well i mean yeah, not most but i mean probably 34 percent of our movies are science fictional i mean they're they're superhero yes. movies or they're got some kind of horror fantastic elements you know it's like like when Guillermo del Toro our uh, our friend when, when he won the Oscar for um The Shape of Water yes I don't know if you remember that moment but but he gave his acceptance speech he goes he goes now for all the genre workers I've opened the door now let's kick it down you know yes. let's kick down the door you know it's like yeah let's kick yeah. it down now you know yeah. <laughs> we all pick up our pencils and charge yeah <laughs> that's it and charge yeah because i mean that, that that's a, that's the mythology for for our, yes. our 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 current times is science fictional and fantasy and stuff like that you know so i mean if if we can that's the stuff i love too i mean yes me too i mean i i, I love high literary stuff too but i mean but mm -hmm. um some of it i mean some of it's just delicate and beautiful but um but I, you know, I can be totally happy watching a B movie, and um, and uh, anyway, so if if I can write from that place, that's that's where the, that's the place that a lot of my fellow citizens are in. Is that is that kind of genre world place? And if I can you take me back to your experience in like secondary and high school? You had mentioned that um, you had that that teacher that got you loving Kirsten, poetry, but the poetry yeah. she got hey, you loving. And we're still friends too, by the way. You know? Oh wow. So, but she, she, you were, you're listing um, poems from, from 45 the years later, literary tradition. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like those guys and that's what I, that's why I, I mean, that's why I spent most of my life reading mm -hmm. was those guys. I think that's why I can, that's why I have maybe some luck at having slightly literary, uh, how, slightly right. literary science fictional poems or genre. How did, how did she, what about what she, what, what spread the fire? Like what, what, made a catch for you well she i think her pedagogy was was um I, you know i that's a great question she had a joy of poetry that she brought to the table and i don't really remember her making us tie a lot of poems down to uh, a chair and beating with a hose in fact i remember one time she gave us this exercise for um was it wallace stevens no who was her bill I, I can't remember who wrote the poem but it's like it's got a line in it honey you just sort of stomped on my aorta which is a really goofy line for a poem, you know, and she asked us to write about it and you know, do the exegesis thing. And uh, so we're all writing about all the serious, you know, stuff that, you know, 12th graders would write, you know, serious, 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 serious. And she read through our stuff. She goes, not one of you guys, not one of you mentioned the humor. And the whole point of the poem is this is a humorous poem. It's not a poem to like drain all this meaning out of you. So let's just read it and enjoy it. And I was like, wow. So I was doing what I've been trained to do. And it was like, no, nope, you got to enjoy it first. And then, Maybe part of our, part of the problem like in the in the broader poetry world um that we're not teaching people to just have fun with poetry like we're like oh you've got to take this seriously yeah oh, it, it, yeah i think it's exactly the problem and, and i've read books about well not books i've read articles about it and um they, they say that it started with the invention of english departments back like like i think oxford had their theirs in like 1860 something or other and cambridge added theirs in the 1920s and in between there was a lot of universities added um English departments and and you know if you're an English if you're an English department you got to have work you got to make work for yourself and uh, so they begin they begin to do um, explanations uh, exegesis of um, writers like Robert Browning you know and and I like Browning quite a bit I mean I I really do but but his work is kind of you know for for the uninitiated his some of his work can be kind of obscure you know and so mm -hmm. you you need some you need a guide to explain it mm -hmm. and so they became professional guides. And then so then so poetry arose in the 20th century, as, I mean like Pounder, Eliot, or whatever, as, as people who who then who then would um, 
provided material for the professional guides to latch onto and explain. I mean, I mean, if a professional guide looks at one of my poems or one of Ted Kuzer's poems, there's not much to say about it. I mean, it's pretty much, I mean, like pretty much, any, pretty much anybody on the street can read it and enjoy it. And, and I mean, yeah, there might be subtle meanings and there might be like some of that philosophy oozing out that I'm talking about. They might not see that, but, um, but you know, it's um, so, so that I think, and then that, and that filters down. So everybody who teaches high school or grade school or whatever, they all went to college and they had English department stuff. So they all, that exegetical stuff, all, all cascades down into our educational system. And, um, and at the end of the day, they, uh, they got, they, you know, they grab, by the time people are in 12, by the time people graduate from high school, they are sick of poetry. They don't want anything to do with it. You know, you know it, it was never um, talked about something they could enjoy. It was always talked about it as a job, like a, like a really boring Sudoku puzzle. I mean, they had to, they had to, sit <laughs> out, you know, right. you know, and, um, in it because it kind of it takes that same you know it takes the art and it makes it available it makes it even more readily accessible there's you know because it, it, it puts it out in, in different media forms i wanted to yeah, i wanted to ask you John, it. And, um, and help make more friends for poetry that that's that's yes. a big part of my mission help make friends for poetry yes. yeah when i was when i was writing the artist to first ask him to do this um comic i was like and one of the things here is i'm trying to make friends for poetry which needs friends, you know, yes. and can, can you help poetry me make friends, friends for poetry? <laughs> and they were like, yeah.